Hello students around the world and around the state and around the city of where my students reside. Mr. Hogger here and we are in week two of distance learning and here we are for video lesson two continuing where we left off this time for United States history Hogger history episode 110 the civil rights movement in the United States. This is a wonderful lesson to teach in class. It's a great time to ask students to reflect and ask students to do interviews and bring in video clips. This presentation is going to be a shortened list of some of the visuals and slides that I would go over during the traditional lecture portion of the classroom. I think it's still really worthwhile to review and really great to understand and to take time to appreciate even if we aren't together to do it. So here we are. If we were in class, I'd have you do a 15 minute warm up here where I'd ask you to just brainstorm with me what civil rights events happened in this state in the 20th century. If you're watching outside the state or a teacher outside, you could still reflect this activity. And I ask students to, you know, talk about with a partner, what do they know about laws, people, lawsuits and events or progress or marches or anything that's happened in California's history of which there are numerous and we take 15 minutes to do that, and I would collect that and allow phones and computers. Uh, what I would ask is for five people who feel comfortable to share, and if you have a comment, you can email that in to hogrd at luhsd.net. Uh, there are a number of things that we're gonna talk about in this unit, and so many memorable people and moments across the United States, and I always like to start with fast facts, 41 people. This is the number, the Civil Rights Memorial in Montgomery, Alabama, who were killed in the struggle for equal and integration treatment of all people, regardless of race, from 1954 to 1968. And that is just the people on the record who uh, were specifically noted, and their accomplishments are listed on that memorial in Montgomery. During this time, we always take time to acknowledge Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. and Earlier in the year, we watched his mountaintop speech. This is normally when we would uh, assess the I Have a Dream speech as well. And I usually point to 45 seconds in. Well, let's take a listen I'm to that. I'm happy to join with you today in what will go down in history as the greatest demonstration for freedom in the history of our nation. I'll let it go another uh, minute, and you can watch this on your own on YouTube as well. Five score years ago, a great American in whose symbolic shadow we stand today signed the Emancipation Proclamation. This momentous decree came as a great beacon light of hope to millions of Negro slaves who had been seared in the flames of withering injustice. It came as a joyous daybreak to end the long night of their captivity. But 100 years later, the Negro still is not free. 100 years later, the, the life of the Negro is still sadly crippled by the manacles of segregation and the chains of discrimination. And in class, we would watch the entirety. We'd also discuss uh, that most of the time we see references to that speech, we hear the, the refrain, the ending, which I've read was also an improvised verse about having a dream and all of the wonderful visions of what we can be. Uh, we don't often hear the full 17 minutes or 10 minutes or even five minutes of the speech. So there's a lot of value to watching that. And I would encourage you to do that at the conclusion of this podcast and think about what you think is the most meaningful message. And uh, in class, we would break down four or five keywords that are common threads, observations from our students, and then uh, what that m means and what evidence supports the claims for us thinking of what that means. Uh, in this roadmap, we're going to think about an issue that you might like to learn about because I always like to bring student inquiry into this. And you can always put a question on our classroom parking lot. 
One of the people I like to talk about is Jackie Robinson in 1947 because he began to open up the doors of perception. And through television and radio, he began to show people around in live and recorded audiences what kind of integrity, class, skill, and equality that athletes could show on a field of sports and baseball. But it also harkened us back to see that like, you could cheer for someone who could be a hero, and that could open the doors of all kinds of people who see Jackie Robinson succeed in the face of adversity, difficulty, struggle, and hatred, and who had the character and integrity to succeed despite all that, and be a champion, and be a winner. And that began to change people's perception of what all people could accomplish given the opportunity. In the emergence of the 1940s and throughout the period of war and post-war peace and Cold War era, the NAACP establishes a movement to get legal processes going for equality. You had the Double V campaign of the Tuskegee Airmen and other infantry and tank divisions that uh, led to the end of discrimination in the military. Uh, FDR's Executive Order 8802 banned workplace discrimination. Those that served with minorities in war also came home with new experiences to share with their communities and new relationships and new friendships and new appreciations. Those things all began to spread. And through the 1940s, you saw the seeds planted for the beginning of growth towards equity and a movement that, as Dr. King said, is still going on, not just in the day of his speech, but today as well. Uh, Because we get so heavy and so deep and discuss so many implications of some serious events, we would then uh, lighten up with some television and film modern day conversations and then shifting back to the 50s, 60s and 70s and discuss whether or not the depiction of minority characters Uh, and black actors and actresses and depictions of them in television, whether they are examples of equality or inequality. And I have students brainstorm, and I happen to have the list from last year, which is always really eye-opening to to discuss. On the positive side, which is on the left of this chart, we had uh, the movies that were a little more relevant when we did this uh, last year. But Black Panther, Big Bang Theory, hidden figures to help crazy rich Asians and big bang theory was referring to like gender equality, but they also said there's a lot of sexism and overt racism in it as well. So that made the list on both sides. Um, on the right, my students decided to talk about mean girls, family guy, South park clueless for classes and the office. Um, so I would recommend that you think about that too. Like, are we moving more towards equality depictions? Are we moving away from that? And uh, is society as a whole having a conversation that's moving one way or the other? I would play a few clips here about the evolution of television. And there's a documentary by Alison Perlman, who is a colleague of mine at one point, now at UC Irvine as a professor, and talks about how what it does to millions of viewers that see images of class, gender, and race. Now, when we get more towards the quiz and test and uh, standards of this lesson, we, of course, discuss the major landmark case of Brown versus Board of Education in Topeka, Kansas, uh, upholding separate but equal, the changes after World War II, uh, the NAACP pushing lawsuits, the Montgomery bus boycotts with Rosa Parks, and that prompting the rise of Dr. King. And then we mentioned how history is a domino effect of people influencing others who then have their own career. And that really activated Dr. King in the civil rights movement. And we would do a warm up here watching Playing for Change, which is a wonderful uh, video going around the world to record and document musicians playing the same song in many different styles. And this is Otis Redding sitting on the dock of the bay. Sitting in the morning sun I'll be sitting when the evening comes And I would totally recommend that. Just to, just to think about people's talents and abilities and how they can bridge from culture to culture and border to border. 
Locally, we talk about uh, civil rights in this area and because people are watching from all over and we need the in-class resources, we will hold off on that for now. But we definitely can talk about Oakland. This was a student presentation that was done last year that I thought was a, a good example of the work that I would assign my students in class and everyone breaks out to find a local event. But this uh, student group talked about the Black Panther Party inspired by Malcolm X to stand strong and not back down and how that was heavily involved in the Bay Area. We talked about Mel's drive-in protests, the picketing of companies to alter hiring practices to hire more minorities. And there were demonstrations that were orchestrated in mass sit-ins inside the restaurant, occupying all the seats but refusing to order food. The owner signed an agreement later to hire more African Americans. We can talk about music's influence with Motorcycle Mike Super Rat in the late 70s, Tupac, Mac Dre, E-40, all changing the legacy of hip-hop through and talking about civil rights-related issues as well as other messages. Barbara Lee, the U.S. representative for the East Bay in the 13th Congressional District. She's the first woman to represent the district, but also the first African-American. So there are a lot of cases that you could study in your area as well. That I thought was a good student lesson. So I would have all my students do a project in that realm. We also cross into May at this point. So we talk about Mother's Day for a moment. Before we talk about the African-Americans who broke the color barrier, Kenny Washington, Willie O'Ree in the NHL, and Jackie Robinson, and Earl Lloyd in the NBA. So there's a lot of good video content there. We talk about sports and what role sports can have in American history. And it opens doors and it makes people think differently. And it challenges the conceptions that we had at those different eras and how things can change. I also assign a civil rights account where you uh, take on a civil rights event or movement or person. And then you create a social media profile for them and create posts, which is a really good idea. And it's a very enjoyable way of conveying and learning more and diving deeper in these particular characters in history from the Chicano movement, Cesar Chavez, John Lewis, Malcolm X, Muhammad Ali, and many, many more. And what's neat about this is there's names on this list who you probably don't know or events that you probably haven't learned that much about. So that's one that I really enjoy doing as well that might be a good um, like May or June project for us to end the year if we're still on remote and distance learning which it appears we will be we can talk about the Montgomery bus boycotts Rosa Parks refused to give up her seat Martin Luther King Jr. led the peaceful protest of this movement that swept across the region my teacher Melba Beals pictured here on the screen was one of the Little Rock Nine that integrated Central High School in 1957, even though he was attempted to be stopped by Orville Faubus, the governor of Arkansas, and then the president calls in the 101st Airborne Division to bring those uh, young people into that high school. That was the first time that a high school had mixed in the United States. There were sit-ins across the nation, uh, along with the bus trips and the bus boycotts that engaged in efforts to integrate racially segregated facilities. We watched that clip from the March on Washington with more than 200,000 Americans gathered in D.C. And, of course, culminated by the I Have a Dream speech. The Chicano Mexican American movement in the 60s was with, started in many facilities from field workers to student movements. And the Chicano movement inspired its own organized protests like the mass walkouts of high school students in Los Angeles in the 1970s and in other cities across the U.S. as well. Cesar Chavez united farm workers and unionized for better pay and better working conditions and benefits for the people who worked in the fields. Mexican Americans, Filipino Americans, and other minorities who worked in the California fields and began to spread from uh, the Central Valley up and down the state. There was a Native American movement as well with Darcy McNichol drafting the Declaration of Indian Purpose, talking about how Native Americans intended to take control of their own lives and how they disliked termination. This declaration started the Red Power Movement, which is also something that is, is interesting to read deeper into inside the classroom with videos, resources, and primary sources. I liked grouping together people in the room to do some readings from that movement. You've also got the Women's Rights Movement for better conditions at home and in the workplace. And also for sexual orientation liberation as well. In 1959, Dr. King went to India to study the nonviolence and non cooperation techniques of Gandhi, who had achieved independence against British colonial rule. And that's when I would have the class present the results of their research for, this, for the uh, movements and people that they had researched. 
it's really a, a, a interesting time to look at all of these things and movements. You can see that we break it up into days where there's short lectures and then activities because this is a time to really get students involved in finding information. And so I'm sorry that we're not there to do that in person and be able to talk about that and be able to discuss and read the letters from Birmingham prison or the 29 times that Dr. King was jailed or that he got arrested once for driving 30 miles an hour in a 25 mile an hour zone and what it was like having his phone tapped and what uh, difficulties that people had voicing their opinions in this time. Violent attacks on civil rights workers in the South prompted President Kennedy to ask Congress for civil rights law. And a massive march on Washington, along with his assassination, led to President Johnson passing the Voting Rights Act. So that's an important movement. You can see that we touched on some of these things multiple times and we overlay the cross-section of events happening. More radical measures and leaders became popular and... Some people were frustrated with the slow movement and the slow progress of the civil rights movement. Leaders like Malcolm X advocated for armed self-defense. He originally followed the teachings of the Nation of Islam, but broke into more radical strains. And here's a quote. It'll be the ballot or it'll be the bullet. It'll be liberty or it'll be death. And if you're not ready to pay that price, don't use the word freedom in your vocabulary. And so we see different sub-movements in the overall movement for civil rights. The Black Panther Party continues to have demonstrations. There's a 1968 summer with James Earl Ray assassinating Martin Luther King Jr., sparking hundreds of riots throughout the country. And there are challenges and eyewitnesses to history all over. And we could document the differences in schools and the banning of school segregation and the challenges that it, it took, the time it took to desegregate all the way from 1960 to 1976, seen here in this chart from DBS and the National Center for Education Statistics. We talk more about Dr. King in class and his movement, how hundreds of people were arrested and jailed in Birmingham and in other cities across the South, how Bull Connor and other police officials used the order of attacks and dogs and uh, the blasting of hoses and these tactics backfired and promoted sympathy when aired on television. But it was a long, slow movement and it was something that took multiple presidents and multiple laws in the Civil Rights Act in 1964 and Lyndon Johnson and even on and on. And even today, uh, the movement to increase the rates of graduations and pay and median income and reduce the amount of minorities in poverty. Uh, this is an interesting slide just because there's so much good information here that I'll just let you sit and absorb for a second to see what your eye catches. And then I would have students comments on what catches their eyes. But everything seemed to be moving towards progress, but it was not quick, was it? Uh, like looking at the elected officials from 1970 to 2001, where we're over the 8,000 person mark in law enforcement and education, city and county offices and U.S. state legislatures. It has been decades to see those percentage gains. Our book continues to talk about SNCC and the Freedom Summer of 64 and voter registration drives. And this movement swept across the nation, not without its challenges and riots and violence and difficulties and commissions and research and lawsuits and so many, many, many notes that it's, it's a great time to break out student groups and really discuss how all those things and all those events began to move things forward. And as these things move forward, so does society and culture. Look at the difference in the juxtaposition between how people dressed, uh, some, some people in society, how counterculture pops up, how uh, movements and protests begin to join, and how one protest can lead to another, or the activation of one's mind, or how people see uh, mainstream culture and relationships, or how people see music, and how people hear uh, the evolution of sound and entertainment. So many things are happening during these decades all at the same time, all at once, as we've been saying in class, and that it's never one thing at a time. And there's never just one way to look at it. Like you could show this video that we're making right now to many generations and they'll have different opinions about the events and what has happened. And that also is a new chapter for America in the diversion and division of attention and conversation that we're not all thinking and feeling the same thing. 
And with that, our presentation is actually ending. So in about 20 minutes, we've covered just a highlight overview and the difference of being in class with you and you being able to generate content is you're filling in the blanks. And uh, that's what we'll do if we get a chance to do a final project together. And if not, this has been Mr. Hogger wishing you all the best on your remote learning. And I hope this video helped uh, kind of animate some of the things that you're reading about and learning about. And until next time, everybody, I'll say be well, be safe, and enjoy this time with your family. Don't forget to be proactive and be creative. And until next time, class is dismissed.